Anders? Uh, well, I come from a very close country, that is Mexico. Uh, I'm still trying to figure out why I, I, I flew to LA and then to here instead of getting to Tijuana and cross the border. <laughs> legally, legally. Because, <laughs> um, well, anyway, uh, I'm the founder and the digital investigation director of Matica, that is uh, the first computer forensic private lab in Latin America. I have been doing computer forensics for 11 years now. Uh, I look a little younger. I started almost when I was in the cradle. Um, and uh, my experience is pretty much because I'm an advisor and contractor for law enforcement agencies in all Latin America, uh, helping them train uh, and also prosecute uh, some, some cases down there. So uh, I'm going to be talking especially in, in the countries that are more intended to have laws about uh, cybersecurity, and also the ones that they're starting and they don't have anything like Uruguay that have only, only one uh, forensic expert for all the country. So uh, that's my, my intention and, and, and to show you how, how we're doing, doing things. I have been working also for the United Nations, Interpol, and the Secret Service here in, in the States helping them. So I, I hope I can help you understand what's going on in our area. Uh, Andres, could you? Brief us on Mexico next. Sure. Thank you. Uh, if you can put the PowerPoint, please. Can I manage this? <laughs> I'm going to try. <laughs> I'm going to see if it works with Mexicans. So um, uh, I'm going to talk about not only Mexico, but a little more about Latin America and what's, what's going on. And uh, first of all, I, I love numbers. And uh, about numbers, we're talking about on internet users in Latin America, considering uh, the, world, the world world or worldwide, uh, we're talking about 20.2 are pretty much in Latin America. So uh, I cannot say that it's a lot. I cannot say that it's uh, a few. But the thing is, when you start opening this uh, into, into which countries, it's, it's really impressive. When Gordon uh, showed one of the, of the slides, about, uh, well, there, there were like three slides. I actually almost uh, uh, stand up and start clapping when I saw Mexico and Argentina on that until I figured out that it was uh, SQL in attacks. So, uh, <laughs> uh, but we have to be good in something. Uh, so, uh, here we go. Uh, Probably something that is not really known around here is that Brazil is the country that has most internet users in Latin America, but also the BBC actually said that from uh, each 10 hackers slash crackers around the world, pretty much five are Brazilians. Uh, we're, we're kind of safe because they don't speak really good English or Spanish, so uh, so far uh, we're, we're, we're safe on that. Picture? Excellent. Mm -hmm. So uh, <laughs> when um, the, next, the next one is, is actually Mexico. And in Mexico, it's, it's really, really impressive because let me, let me give you a little more numbers here. In the case of Brazil, uh, that 37.9% uh, of this graphic is actually the 37% of the population. While uh, Mexico, we're in the second place with 15.3%. Uh, that is actually a 27.2% per of the population. So what I'm telling you this is uh, yesterday while we were at the, at the dinner, I was asking Jason, uh, you know, how come you have a, a very large uh, cyber crime office with even a song? You know, uh, how, how you get that? Who, who actually proposed that. And he said uh, that he didn't know, but you know, <laughs> I'm, I'm not gonna say because it was off the record. So, um, <laughs> but anyway, uh, the, the reason here, it's pretty much priorities. In Mexico, if we're talking about that only 27.2% of the population has access to internet, you know, you have other things to put the money on. So right now, internet and cybersecurity is not a priority for our countries. So that's the primary reason that uh, we really appreciate when, when the US, when Canada, and other countries go to Mexico and train people. Because one of the biggest issues that we have is that in comparison to the states, the persons that work inside law enforcement, 
most of them, they are not police officers, they're not engineers. So what happens here is that I have been doing training for architects that are on the cybercrime unit. So how come you're gonna be expecting someone to learn first what's TCP IP to then try to figure out how, how a fraud was made on, on the internet? The other, the other big issue about it, it's, it's the law itself. And, 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 it's, and it's funny. You know, if you commit a, crime, uh, a violation of an of a information system in China, uh, you know, it's death penalty. So, well, not if they hack the U.S., no, but... Uh, <laughs> but... Uh, I'll neither confirm nor deny that. <laughs> <laughs> but also you have countries like uh, Finland that when you... Uh, if you're a Finland guy and actually... Uh, hack one of the servers down there, actually someone that has responsibility on that is actually the IT guy, because he was hired to protect the systems, not really the, to, to purchase or to, to catch the hacker. And in, in Latin America, it's so funny because the law, and, and you know, we're based on code law instead of, of the way it is done here. And uh, the way it is written, uh, if I have a mouse and I hit somebody and, and for some reason it's now dead, it could be a cyber crime because you're using the computer as the, the way you're killing someone. <laughs> so that's the way it happens in our countries. And, and uh, you know, it's, it's funny, but it's sad. No, uh, I, I figure out that I, I couldn't cry every day. You know, I have to look the funny part of everything. Uh, Things like when you try to explain a DA, or kind of DA because we don't have the, the same name, but a DA uh, that they stole information from, from the BlackBerry, they're trying to find out where, where the hole is where the information used to be. Uh, because, you know, how, how come the information is going to be still there if, if they robbed it, right? So uh, things like that, or even uh, my, one of the situations that I had, I, I came to the DA and I said, uh, here's a, a laptop. They actually took information from it. And he's like, a what? Um, a laptop? Uh, a portable computer? Ah, computer. OK, portable computer. And he said, well, uh, show me. I'm like, well, they, st they stole, inf stole the information from it. Uh, and uh, he said, well, but, but the computer is down there. I'm like, yes. So what you're expecting me to, to, to see that it was robbed? The information, sorry, the information. Uh, can you open it? And he was trying to find out where, where or how come the information was stored in the computer. Mm. Finally, and, and after three hours or, of explaining how information is stored in a computer, he said, thank you very much. I'm, I'm learning a lot. Uh, but well, how much information they, they, they took? And I said, one gigabyte. Come on. One gigabyte? Come on, when there are more. You know, one gigabyte is only one. <laughs> <laughs> How you explain one gigabyte? <laughs> How you explain that uh, I, exported, uh, I exported something from Word to Excel. Export is getting out of the country. <laughs> so it's tough. So 